Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. A special shout out to my Super Thanks contributor at Stefan19k. And because he contributed $20 or more, he chose to do a video. And the video topic that he has chosen was the Chicago and Northwestern's 282 Mikado J class, some were known as War Orphans. And just a friendly reminder that if you would like a custom video such as this one, all you have to do is hit the super thanks button and contribute $20 or more to the channel's efforts and name your title in the comment section of that video that you hit the super thanks on. And as always, any amount that you want to uh, contribute to support the channel is greatly appreciated as well and will be recognized. And with that, let's get on with the show. Okay, so the Chicago Northwestern Railroad was a Class 1 railroad that was located, obviously, in the Midwest of the United States, and it was also known as just simply the Northwestern. The railroad itself operated more than 5,000 miles of track at the turn of the 20th century and over 12,000 miles of track in seven states before retrenchment in the late 1970s. Until 1972, when the employees purchased the company, it was named the Chicago Northwestern Railway or the Chicago and Northwestern Railway Company. The CNNW became one of the longest railroads in the United States as a result of mergers with other railroads such as the Chicago Great Western Railway, the Minneapolis and St. Louis Railway, and, and many others. By 1995, track sales and abandonment had reduced the total mileage to about 5,000. The majority of the abandoned and sold lines were lightly trafficked branches in Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. Large line sales, such as those that resulted in the Dakota, Minnesota, and Eastern Railroad, further helped reduce the railroad to, main, to a mainline core with several regional feeders and branches. Union Pacific purchased the Chicago Northwestern in April of 1995 and integrated it with its own operation. So as for the 282 Mikado, they were perhaps the workhorse of the steam era during the 20th century, and most roads class one railroads that is rostered at least a few of them and i've said this before and i'll say it again whether it liked it or not all of the united states railroads during the outbreak of world war ii had to lean on the mikados to move the freight because they were probably the highest in total numbers nationwide and as you can really say they were the backbone of world war ii freight movement because basically a lot of us would just simply think, oh, something like, you know, the Y class of the Norfolk and Western or the big giant articulators or the 484s or something like that. No, it was the 282 Mikado, mainly, you know, largely responsible for freight movement throughout World War II. The Chicago Northwestern's large network prompted a need to have a likewise vast fleet of steam locomotives. From the start of the 20th century, the Chicago Northwestern relied on a large roster of, of locomotives like 262 Prairies, uh, 280 Consolidations, and the like to handle much of his daily freight assignments. However, as traffic increased substantially, the railroad needed a more powerful workhouse, uh, workhorse, and they went to Alco in 1913 for an order of the larger 282 Mikados, or Mikes for short, and that became the first of the J-Class locomotives. And as such, the Chicago Northwestern Railway actually ordered 310 of these 282 Mikado locomotives between the years of 1913 and 1923. And once again, they were all built by Alco. In addition, subsidiary railroad, Chicago, St. Paul, Minneapolis, and Omaha Railroad, or the Omaha Road for short, acquired an additional 32, and they also class, uh, classified them as Class J. The Chicago Northwestern uh, Mikes remained in regular service for more than 40 years and some actually almost made 50 years before the railroad began retiring them in the late to mid, uh, mid to late 1950s. And just as it was with World War II, the Class J and the rest of the nation's 282 Mikados formed the backbone of the American freight movement for World War I. Now, thankfully for U.S. railroads, World War I didn't quite catch them as flat-footed as World War II certainly did. And that's simply because World War I only involved having to move freight to one coast in the country, whereas World War II, the railroads had to move freight in massive amounts to either coast in the United States and Canada to support war efforts in the war against Japan and the war against Germany and its allies. 
So in the mid to late 1930s, all of the original J class of the Omahas were rebuilt and they were reclassified as class J Alpha. There was also a follow-on class for the Chicago Northwestern itself and that class was designated as J2. And these were classic USRA heavy Mikado engines with a slight difference in tube count. Schenectady delivered four in April of 1919, but Richmond's six followed almost two years later in January of 1921. So obviously they were using a USRA, USRA design, but did not serve in the war. Those locomotives built in Schenectady used standard stokers while those built in Richmond had modified B's. Firebox heating surface included 27 square feet, which was down by two and a half square feet of arch tubes, and piston valves had 14 inch uh, diameters. So locomotive numbers 432 and uh, through 435 of the original J2 class, which again were the USRA types, those locomotives were fitted with thermic siphons that added 84 square feet to the firebox heating surface in addition to the 14.3 square feet that remained of the arch tubes. This raised total direct heating surface from 307 square feet to 368.3 square feet. Some other aspects that changed with the J-Class with these modifications were that the 61-inch original drivers were changed to 64-inch drivers and the boiler was now up to 200 PSI and they weighed 319,000 pounds with a 63 square foot grade area. The final tractive effort of the J-Class wound up at 61,965 pounds. And though they were not as powerful as the Class H or the H1484s, Chicago Northwestern's Mikados of more than 300 by that time, and again, all were built by Alco, they were the mainstays of its heavy freight operations well into the diesel era, and this was true of many Class 1 railroads as well. Also of note about the J-Class, the last seven locomotives built were equipped for oil firing right from the start. And at least 18 more were retrofitted in the 1930s and 1940s as part of their overhaul. And these locomotives were used in Nebraska and Wyoming. So with the onset of World War II, rebuilding of these locomotives stopped, but fitting of these new mechanical stokers continued, and those further modified with these new mechanical stokers were reclassified as Class J-S. And also during World War II, several Class I railroads were all struggling to move freight throughout the nation to meet war demands. And in an effort to help each other out, the Chicago and Northwestern sent several J-Class locomotives to the Seaboard Airline Railroad. And anecdotal stories suggest that these particular locomotives were called war orphans. However, I was not able to ascertain how many locomotives are actually sent to the Seaboard to help them out. And in 1944, the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad traded two of its Class J locomotives for the Omaha Rose 2J1-210-2 two locomotives. Retirements of these locomotives started actually in 1942, and they continued until the end of steam through 1956. None of the Chicago and Northwestern's J-Class were kept, and all of them were scrapped. So without the following specifications apply to the Chicago and Northwest Class J282 Mikados, all built by Alco. All right, so the build dates of all 342, including the Omaha versions, were from 1913 to 1923. The driver diameter started at 61 inches and wound up at 64 inches. The locomotive weight wound up at 314,000 pounds. The total weight combined with the tender is 467,500 pounds. The boiler pressure started at 185 PSI and was raised to 200 PSI. The locomotives had two cylinders at 27 inch by 32 inches. The valve gears were either Baker or Young valve gears with piston type valves. The operator, of course, was the Omaha Road and the Chicago Northwest Railroad. And finally, all were scrapped by 1957. And with that, I'll wrap up the video. And if you enjoyed the content today, please hit the like button and also hit subscribe if you've not done so, as both features help the channel grow immensely. And don't forget about the super thanks button if you want to contribute to the channel's efforts. And if you don't want to do it that way, you can always visit our print shop at nickelplate limited on etsy.com. And we thank you once again.